Members of the jury, this is a typical case for a jury and falls particularly within your province. There is a direct conflict in the testimony in this case which cannot be contradicted. The facts are to be determined and disposed of by you. It is your duty in this case to pass upon the facts. I will give you the rules of law which will guide you and assist you in reaching your determination. Counsel for the respective parties have attempted to ask, aid you by interpreting the testimony for you. But after all, it is for you to exercise your judgment in respect to the interpretation of the testimony. You are also to use your own recollection and not that of counsel or not that of the court in passing upon a reconcili reconciliation of this testimony. This is an action in negligence. Negligence in the law means the failure, by, uh, the failure to exercise reasonable care. Reasonable care is always dependent upon the circumstances of the case. What constitutes reasonable care is chargeable to both parties to the action. The burden of proof is upon the plaintiff. The plaintiff brings this action into court and the plaintiff must bear the burden of proving the case to your satisfaction, that is, he must prove it by a fair preponderance of the evidence. That means evidence which is evident to you as being offered by the other party. The number of witnesses does not control. It is the quality and character of the testimony. The plaintiff in this case has the burden of showing that the defendant was negligent and that he, the plaintiff, was free from any contributing to the accident. This accident occurred at 50th Street and 6th Avenue in this city. The location has been described to you by the witnesses. There are two streetcar tracks on 6th Avenue turning north and south. The plaintiff claims that on the morning of this accident, which was on October 27th, somewhere between 8 and 9 o'clock, that he attempted to board a streetcar on the northwest corner of 6th Avenue and 50th Street. He claims the streetcar was about 20 to 25 feet north of the northeasterly curb of 50th Street and that would bring the rear of the car about 40 feet further to the north, being in all about 60 to 65 feet north of the northerly curb of 50th Street. The plaintiff claims the car going south had stopped at this point and that a woman prece preceding him had boarded the car, that he then took hold of a stanchion to the right of the entrance with his right hand and raised his foot, right foot and placed it upon the step of the car and was about to raise his left foot when the car started and he was dragged for a distance of about six or seven feet when he fell from the car, falling on the left side and receiving the injuries testified to in this lawsuit. He says the car proceeded for approximately the same distance before it came to a stop. Now, the duty of the railroad company in the operation of the cars in respect to a car which has stopped to take on passengers is to use some effort to ascertain whether it is safe for the car to proceed and if it fails in that respect then it can be found guilty of negligence. The plaintiff's claim in this case is that while he was boarding the car it started and threw him to the ground in the manner I have described although he was using proper care in attempting to board the car. The defendant tells an entirely different story. The defendant claims this accident the car had stopped at the place where the, accident, where the plaintiff claims that he attempted to board it, that it took on passengers and proceeded and was into the street intersection and passing over it 
when the plaintiff, running from the east side of the streetcar, ran toward the west around the rear of the car, caught hold of the rear stanchion of the entrance, and ran along with the car for a short distance and fell to the ground. The defendant claims, under those circumstances, there is no liability upon its part for the injuries which the plaintiff may have sustained, that whatever injury the plaintiff sustained was the result of his own carelessness and negligence and was not attributable in any way to the fault of the railroad company. That is the defendant's claim. The defendant asks that upon those facts you bring in a verdict in its favor. I think I have proceeded or presented the claims of the respective parties. If you should find that the defendant was not at fault or the defendant being at fault, the plaintiff contributed to the accident, then your verdict will be for the defendant. 